Hi dear students. Welcome to another session on fungal diseases. In this, we are going to discuss about subcutaneous infections. Subcutaneous mycosis is a disease in which the pathogen and exosaprophyte penetrate the dermis or even deeper during or after a skin trauma. Lesions gradually spread locally without dissemination to deep organs. It rarely causes deep mycosis in patients with severe underlying abnormalities and it occurs mostly in tropics. In human skin, there are epidermis, dermis and subcutaneous tissue. So you are here you can see the subcutaneous tissue in this area. The common subcutaneous mycosis include mycotic mycetoma, phyohypomycosis, chromoblastomycosis, sporotrichosis, lobomycosis, rhinosporidiosis. Now let's see each of them in detail. The first one is mycetoma. So what is mycetoma? Mycetoma is a chronic granulomatous progressive inflammatory disease that involves the subcutaneous tissue after a traumatic inoculation of the causative organisms. It usually involves the food and rarely other parts of the body. It may be caused by true fungi, eumycetes or by higher bacteria, acnomycetes and therefore it is classified into eumycetoma and acnomycetoma respectively. The disease was originally reported by Gill from Madurai, South India and it was initially named Madura food after the region of where the disease was first identified. This infection results in a granulomatous inflammatory response in the deep dermis and subcutaneous tissue which can extend to the underlying bone. It is characterized by the formation of grains containing aggregates of the causative organisms that may be discharged onto the skin surface through multiple sinuses. Mycetoma caused by microaerophilic acnomycetes is termed acnomycetoma, and mycetoma caused by the true fungi is called eumycetoma. A common causative organism is acnomadura madre, but madra food is also caused by other acnomycetes. The most commonly affected part is the foot or lower leg with infection of the dorsal aspect of the forefoot being typical. The hand is the next common location. However, mycetoma lesions can occur anywhere on the body. Lesions on the chest and back are caused by nocardia species whereas lesions on the head and neck are usually caused by streptomyces somaliensis. Causative agents of U mycetoma are Madrella mycetomatis, Madrella grecia, Exophiella gensalmea, Acrimonium species, Aspergilla species, Fusarium species, Kerosporium species. And causative agent of Acno mycetoma is Acno madra madre, Acno madra palteri, Streptomyces somaliensis, and Nocaria species. Now let's see the major differences in the clinical features of acnomycetoma and eumycetoma. The causative organism of acnomycetoma is aerobic acnomycetes and it's hyaline and fired hypomycetes in the case of eumycetoma. The tumor mass is multiple diffused with ill-defined margins in case of acnomycetoma and it's usually single with well-defined margins in eumycetoma. Sinuses appear early and more in number in acnomycetoma and it appears late and relatively less in number in eumycetoma. The opening of sinuses are raised, inflamed and flared up in the case of acnomycetoma and it's flat opening and it is not flared up in the cases of eumycetoma. The flap of opening can be easily removed in the case of acnomycetoma but it is not easily removed in the case of eumycetoma. The discharge is usually purulent and it's uh, serous in the nature of eumycetoma. The grains are usually white except in the case of Acnomadra pellicari which is red and it can be black or white in the case of eumycetoma. These grains or granules are microcolonies of the etiological agents and their demonstration is of diagnostic value. 
And coming to the extent of involvement, it is more extensive in the case of acne mycetoma. Uh, whereas in new mycetoma, it is less extensive and it is uh, only limited to the osteosclerotic lesions of bone. Coming to the pathogenesis, the first organism enters through sites of local trauma. It can be a cut on the hand or any trauma related to carrying soil contaminated material. A neutrophilic response initially occurs which may be followed by a granulomatous reaction and spread occurs through skin, facial planes and can involve the bone. Hematogenous or lymphatic spread is uncommon in this case. The clinical features include tumor-like swelling, multiple draining sinuses, sclerotia or granules of grains in the sinuses. Also dissemination occurs to muscles and bones and Sites which are commonly affected include feet, lower extremities and hands. Laboratory diagnosis of mycetoma. The granules differ in color, shape, dimension and composition. And this property can be used for the laboratory diagnosis. Trans it can be transported in distal water or sterile normal saline. The black granules uh, usually consist of the fungal origin. The small red granules can be streptomyces and the whitish yellow granules can be bacteria or fungi. Wet mound of potassium hydroxide of granules can be used for the detection of hyphae and histological stains of biopsy from sinus tract can also be performed. Mycetoma can also be accurately diagnosed by fine needle aspiration cytology. That is FNA cytology because the mycetoma lesion has a distinct appearance in a cytologic smear. It is characterized by the presence of polymorphous inflammatory cells consisting of a mixture of neutrophils and other cells. The mycetoma causative organism can be identified by their textual description, morphological and biological activities in pure culture, and it may include acid fastness, optimal temperature, proteolactic activity. Utilization of sugars and nitrogenous compounds. Since grains are the source of the culture, they should be alive and free of contaminants and they are usually obtained by deep surgical biopsy. The treatment of mycetoma depends mainly on its etiological agent and the extent of the disease. Until recently, in many centers, the only available treatment for mycetoma was amputation or neglecting surgical excision of the affected part. Besides surgical removal, for eumycetoma we can use ketoconazole and for acnomycetoma we can use streptomycin in combination with dapsone or cotrimazole. Combined drug therapy is always preferred to a single drug to avoid drug resistance and to eradicate residual infection. The common drug regimes are Amic acid sulfate in combination with cotrimazole is the first line for acnomycetoma treatment. We have already discussed that mycetomas may be caused by a number of acnomycetes and filamentous fungi. A similar condition called botryomycosis is caused by Staphylococcus aureus and other kind of bacteria. So their etiological diagnosis is of important. Botryomycosis is a chronic separative infection, that is, pus forming infection. It is characterized by a granulomatous inflammatory response to bacterial pathogen. It may be present with cutaneous or less commonly with the visceral involvement, that is, with other internal organs like kidney, liver. The term botryomycosis is derived from the Greek word botrys means bunch of grapes and earlier it was given the name mycosis due to the presumed fungal etiology in early descriptions. Since the botrya mycosis is caused by bacteria, it is termed as bacterial pseudomycosis or staphylococcal actinophytosis or granular bacteriosis and actinobacillosis. Sporotrichosis. Sporotrichosis is a chronic infection involving cutaneous, subcutaneous and lymphatic tissue. 
It is frequently encountered in gardeners, forest workers and manual laborers, in urban alcoholics and particularly in the case of homeless people who sleep in the garden and it is caused by the thermally dimorphic fungus porothrix kenki. At 25 degrees Celsius it exists as mold and at 37 degrees Celsius it exists as yeast. These are saprophytic fungus and they are found in the decaying vegetation soils and thorns. These fungi pose occupational hazards to florists and agriculture workers. The incidence of the disease is highest in the autumn and first half of the winter and the conditions favor saprophytic growth of sporothrix skinky. The sporotrichosis is rare in semi-arid areas. The fungus grows on decaying vegetable matter, for example the timber in mines. It is acquired through direct inoculation to skin and sometimes through inhalation of conidia. There is formation of initial canker, then subcutaneous nodules appear, followed by ascending infangitis. The nodules will ulcerate. Lymphocutaneous lesions on hand and forearm is formed. The skin lesions characteristically follow lymphatic pathways. It can disseminate or spread to face and joints. For treatment that is restricted to the skin or cutaneous, potassium iodide and terbinafine can be used. In the case of spread or dissemination, amphotericin B can be used. Itroconazole can be used in both in the case of cutaneous and disseminated infections. Spore is the infective stage of the fungus and it causes infection primarily on the hand or the forearm through direct contact of the skin by spores. Typically, infection is introduced in skin through a penetration of thorn and at the site of thorn injury, it causes a lawful pustule or ulcer within the nodules along the draining lymphatics. Frequently, the regional lymph nodes draining the ulcer enlarge, saturate and ulcerate. The primary lesion may remain localized or in the immunocompromised individuals may disseminate to involve the bones, joints, lungs and rarely the central nervous system. In infected tissues, the fungus is seen as cigar-shaped yeast cells without mycelia. Sometimes, asteroid bodies are seen in the lesion composed of a central fungus cell with eosinophilic material radiating from it. Three granulomatous patterns are observed. The sporotrichoid type with concentric zones with necrotic material in the central surrounded by epithelioid histiocytes. The tuberculoid type it merges into the area of epithelioid cells and the foreign body type. Laboratory diagnosis. The samples to be collected include aspiration fluid, pus, biopsy material, skin scrapings and swabs. Microscopy can be performed with KOH mount of specimens or histopathological examination of the tissue sections can be stained by methanamine silver stain. The characteristic feature is the asteroid body, a rounded oval basophilic yeast-like body, which is 3 to 5 micrometer in diameter, with a, which consists of an eosinophilic substance radiating from the yeast cell. The fungus may not be demonstrable in best pus or tissue, hence the culture is done on media incubated at 25 degrees Celsius. The arrangement of the conidia at the apex of the conidiogenous cell is often described as palmate or flower-like with each conidium attached by a denticle to the small vesicle. Uh, this is a microscopic morphology of sporothrix kinky when grown in SDA at 25 degrees Celsius. You can see the clusters of oid conidia produced sympodially on short conidia pores arising at right angles from the thin septate hyphae. Serological tests are helpful in the diagnosis of extracutaneous or systemic infections. A slight latex agglutination test using peptido l rhamnosus d mannan as antigen is a reliable, sensitive and specific test. For cutaneous infection, potassium iodide is given topically or orally. For lymphocutaneous infection, itraconazole is effective. 
for disseminator infection amphotericin b is the drug of choice And finally, the five clinical types of sporotrichosis include lymphocutaneous, fixed cutaneous, mucocutaneous, disseminated, and pulmonary sporotrichosis, which occurs through the inhalation of conidia. The next type of subcutaneous mycosis is the chromoblastomycosis. The most common form of chromomycosis is known as chromoblastomycosis or virucose dermatitis. The lesion consists of warty cutaneous nodules which resemble the florets of cauliflower. It's a chronic fungal infection of the skin and subcutaneous tissue caused by pigmented fungi which produce thick wall, single or multi-celled clusters in tissue. It is characterized by the production of slow-growing exophytic lesions usually on the feet and legs. The chromoblastomycosis is caused by several fungi. The most common include Fialophora virucosa, Fonsiche petrosoi, Fonsiche compacta, Cladophialophora carioni, and rarely by Rhinocladiella aquasversa. And this causative fungi have been isolated from wood and soil, and the infection usually results from trauma, such as a puncture from a splinter of wood. This condition is usually, usually found in rural communities. The soil inhabiting fungi enters hand or feet after trauma and the unilateral swelling on one side of the lower limb which can be one swelling with nodules around it, scaly lesion, ulcerated lesion, thickened skin and the secondary bacterial infection causes pus production. Recurrent infections results in fibrosis with scar formation causing lymphatic obstruction which will be resembling elephantiasis. All these fungi are named according to the dominant form of conidiation. Fialophora virucosa. During microscopy, dominant form of conidiation is the production of flask-shaped fialites with a pronounced dark colorate at the apex. These are produced laterally or terminally. Hyaline pinwalled elliptical conidia are produced at the tip of the fialite in basipetal succession. Another example of the chromoblastomycosis is the Fonsaceae petrosoi. During microscopy, dominant form of conidiation is sympodial with the conidia confined to the upper part of the cell. There are basically three types in them. The cladosporium type here, the brown single cell conidia are produced on short tentacles and may in turn produce secondary conidia in a similar manner with disjunctor and shield cells at the confluence. In rhinocladiella type, it consists of a bottle brush conidia. In fialophora type, flag shaped conidia with flaring conidia having a flower in vase appearance. Here, the conidia produced is by acropetal budding. Coming to its clinical features, the lesions are usually found on exposed sites, particularly the feet, legs, arms, face and neck. A warty papule slowly enlarges to form a hypertrophic plague. In some lesions, the plague is flat and expands slowly with central scarring. The early lesion may occasionally be an ulcer and eventually after months or many years, large hyper keratotic masses are formed and this may be as large as 3 cm thick. Secondary ulceration may also occur and the lesion is usually painless unless the presence of secondary infection causes itching and pain. Sadly, lesions are produced by scratching and there may be lymphatic spread to adjacent areas. Hematogenous spread has also occurred but this rare and brain abscess have also been described. Secondary infection may eventually lead after several years to lymphatic stasis with the production of elephantiasis. Some forms of the infection produce psoriasis form lesions and squamous carcinomas may develop in chronic lesions. Coming to the laboratory diagnosis of chromoblastomycosis, the specimens are skin scrapings and uh, biopsy from lesions can also be used. Microscopy with the scrapings can be performed with 
ten percent each KOH mound. Round fungus cells can be seen in a sclerotic body appearance, and the culture media used is sabors, dextrose agar, and it can digest gelatin. Irrespective of the species, the pathogen can be seen in biopsy sections as deeply pigmented, thick walled, uniform, or sclerotic cells, medullar bodies, copper penny. Occasionally, in superficial skin scrapings from the surface of the lesions, pigmented hyphae rather than sclerotic cells can be seen. Multiplication in vivo is by fission rather than budding, and this results in the production of single or multiple celled clusters giving a chestnut appearance. And this image shows the hematoxylin and eosin stain section with the characteristic dark brown sclerotic cells which divide by binary fission and not by budding. All the agents of the chromoblastomycosis form the sclerotic bodies. Colonies of all species are dark grey to green to black and velvety or downy with a black reverse. Three forms of conical production are observed in the most common agents of infection and that include acropital budding, production of phyllites, symphodial conidiation. Itroconazole and terbinafine is often successful in the treatment of chromoblastomycosis. Although responses to both are thought to be better, the causative organism is cladosporium carionum. Flucytosin is used on its own or combined with amphotericin B may also be effective in the treatment, but resistant to flucytosin may develop if it is used alone. Other approaches to treatment include cryotherapy or the local application of heat. The use of surgery is contentious as in larger place there is a risk in pursuing this approach as satellite lesions may develop around the excision site. Surgery is really only indicated in very small lesions combined with chemotherapy. The next type of subcutaneous mycosis is the pheohypomycosis. It's a mycotic infection of humans and lower animals caused by a number of dematitious or brown pigmented fungi where the tissue morphology of the causative organism is mycelial. This separated from other clinical types of disease involving brown pigmented fungi where the tissue morphology of the organism is a grain that is mycotic mycetoma or sclerotic body that is chromoblastomycosis. Clinical forms of the disease range from localized superficial infections of the stratum corneum to subcutaneous cyst as seen in pyomycotic cyst to invasion of the brain. The distribution of this kind of disease is worldwide. There are several etiological agents like Vanciella dermatitis, Xperla, Gene Selmy, Cladophilophora, Pantiana, Nacrasia, Manchifera, etc. There are mainly four clinical forms of pyohypomycosis that include cutaneous, subcutaneous, invasive and cerebral pyohypomycosis and the paranasal sinus pyohypomycosis. It is the cutaneous pyohypomycosis of the face caused by Vangiella dermatitis. The exophila cell may on surface dextrose agar shows black mucoid yeast like three colonies producing with age greenish grey suit like aerial mycelium. And this is the microscopic morphology of exophila cell may. Uh, you can see numerous ellipsoid yeast like budding cells. Uh, present in the young cultures, it is scattered among these yeast like cells, inflated. And this is the microscopic morphology of cladosporium, cladosporoids, branching chains of single cell conidia produced in an acropetal manner from simple erect pigmented conidia force. The term blastocatenate is often used to describe chains of conidia, where the youngest conidium is at the apical or distal end of the chain. Conidia are pale brown to dark brown and have a distinct dark halum. The conidia closest to the conidia for and where the chains branch are usually shield shaped. 
And this is the microscopic morphology of Vangella dermatitis showing flag shaped cylindrical piles without distinct colorites, which usually pale brown in color uh, and grows at 42 degrees Celsius. And this one is the epicocum nigrum showing a cluster of darkly pigmented globose to pyriform rough bulk multicellular conidia. And this one is the eulocadian species. Here the colonies are rapid growing with brown to olivaceous black or grayish uh, appearance. And this shows the microscopic morphology of Pithomyces chartarum showing darkly pigmented multicellular conidia formed on small peg like branches of the vegetative hyphae. The next type of subcutaneous infection is a rhinophycomycosis. It's a slow progressing infection of subcutaneous tissues or paranasal sinuses. The causative agent is Conidiobolus coronatus. It is a saprophyte in soil, humus, and decomposing plant matter. Inhalation of spore or implantation of spores into nasal cavities by fingernails initiate the infection. It is most prevalent in the older age group. It affects the nasal mucosa of the turbinates and spread to the subcutaneous tissues of the face and neck. There can be facial deformities with large nose. It is usually painless with heart swelling. There can be nasal obstruction and epistaxis that is bleeding from the nose. And pain occurs in secondary bacterial infection. For treatment we can use itraconazole, ketoconazole, fluconazole, amphotericin B, potassium iodide. Rhinosporidiosis is a chronic granulomatous disease characterized with the development of a friable polyps usually confined to nose, mouth or eye but rarely seen on the genitalia or other mucous membranes. Although the disease was first identified in Argentina, most cases come from India and Sri Lanka. The causative fungus Rhinosporidium fevery has not been cultivated in media. The mode of infection is not known. However, it is suggested that it is transmitted in dust and water and fish is believed, believed to be the natural host of this fungus. Animal inoculation is also not successful. Infection is seen most commonly in persons taking bath in stagnant pools and in individuals who dive in streams to collect sand from river birds. The disease is characterized by the development of large friable polyps or wart-like lesion in the nose, conjunctiva or eye. The lesions can also be seen in buccal cavity skin or genitalia. Laboratory diagnosis includes the demonstration of sporangia of rhinosporidium seabury tissue sections uh, with HNE staining that is hematoxylin and eosin or other special stains such as GMS stain, PAS stain. The sporangia measure 10 to 200 micrometer in diameter and contains thousands of endospores. And this image shows the endospores and sporangia of rhinosporidium seabury. Treatment of the condition is carried out by surgery or cauterization. Cauterization is a medical practice or technique of burning a part of a body to remove or close off a part of it. Chemotherapy with dapsone is also useful. Another subcutaneous infection is a lobomycosis. Lobomycosis is a chronic localized sub-epidermal infection characterized by the presence of keloidal, vertical, nodular lesions or sometimes by vegetating crusty plates and tumors. The lesions contain masses of spheroidal yeast-like organism tentatively referred to as lobo-loboid. There is no systemic spread. The disease has been found in humans and dolphins and is restricted to the Amazon Valley in Brazil. The etiological agent is known as the lobo lobi, remains to be cultured. It typically affects the exposed areas of the skin and the extremities. Lobomycosis shows extensive vertical lesions on the legs. The initial infection is thought to be caused by traumatic implantation such as an arthropod sting, snake bite, stingray sting or wound acquired while cutting vegetation. The lesions begin as small heart nodules resembling keloids and may spread slowly in the dermis and continue to develop over a period of many years. Older lesions become very cold and may ulcerate. 
The grogut methanamine silver or the GMS stain is commonly used for the identification of fungi on cytosmeres and tissue sections. It imparts a black color to the fungal profiles and a blue or green color to the background. Here you can see the GMS stain tissue section showing numerous darkly pigmented yeast like cells. They are often in chains and 9 to 12 micrometer in size. The disease may be transferred to other areas of the skin by further trauma or auto inoculation. Thus, the areas of involvement may become quite extensive. Lesions are usually found in the arms, legs, face or ears. 90% of the cases are found in men, mostly in farmers and other high risk groups exposed to various harsh conditions. It does not become a systemic fungal infection but fungal cells can be found in proximal lymph nodes. It affects immunocompetent patients and wide distribution is seen in South America and isolated cases in the US, Canada and in Europe. More common in men than in women, an average age of infected patient is around 38 years old. There are two forms of the disease that is cutaneous lobomycosis and subcutaneous lobomycosis. In cutaneous lobomycosis, shiny, atrophic and discolored skin is observed. There are lesions, papules or plates that are verified or ulcerative. Lesions are usually found on the arms, legs, face or ears. Tissue samples obtained by curettage or surgical biopsy and histopathology can be performed uh, using 10% potassium hydroxide and Parker ink. GMS stain and PAA stain can also be used to demonstrate the yeast like cells. It requires early diagnosis. Surgical excision is performed. Oral clopazimine therapy is performed. There is no current method known for preventing lobomycosis.